I heard about it from a couple of my old friends. I earned my way up to the top, started doing my work in school, started going to class every day. I earn cans and stuff, I earn canvases, just staying on the right track and doing the right thing. I mean, we gotta stay like top of the line, we gotta be perfect just to be a part of this. I mean, it's a big opportunity and it could take us somewhere. And some people don't realize that, I guess. And I didn't realize it at first until I was actually a part of it. Because this could really take us all somewhere if we really stick with it and keep going at it. Bit on your arm. Try to make it still so it looks like the H. Where, right here? On the side right there, on the top right there? Where? Uh, top left. Right there? Yeah. Try to Try make, to make it, it more, more lined. Way? Yeah, more lined up. I think Picasso Project's like a really big thing and it's, it's going to start getting bigger throughout the years. I mean, just in these two years that it's been around, people, I mean, I, I can't even explain it how, how many people have hit us up so far just to, just for random stuff like, yeah, we'll pay you how, this, this much to come paint our building. Like, it's pretty awesome how fast it spread. This is South Omaha, a lower income area of the city often known for its rough neighborhoods and gang violence. Far from the glossy towers of downtown and the McMansions of West Omaha, it's a part of the city that has often felt left behind by the creative and cultural boom that has been hitting Omaha's art and music communities since the mid-90s. In an effort to curb illegal tagging and gang activity, members of the community have begun an urban art movement. They hope for it to invigorate the area and make it a direct contributor to Omaha's burgeoning status as an artistically legitimate city. Omaha in the past hasn't been thought of too much as a place where there was lots of culture. The whole total redevelopment or reshapement of Omaha really started happening about 10 years ago. And then that's what leads us now up to today. The riverfront all got redeveloped during that time period. A lot of the condos started getting finished down in the old market area and in downtown proper. That brought more businesses back downtown to open up. We've got huge big uh, banner projects, for example, by Emerging Terrain that are gracing our abandoned grain elevator systems and stuff now, and those are being used as climbing walls also. So there's all this reapportioning uh, of uh, old spaces, dilapidated buildings, vacated properties and so forth that are being graced by the arts and brought back up into realistically high prime areas, and everybody in the entire community is benefiting from it. The Vinton neighborhood in South Omaha, in which Larry Ferguson runs his studio, has been one of the most apparent beneficiaries of Omaha's enhanced focus on urban art, which is seen as a way to strengthen the fabric of individual neighborhoods and communities. When Larry moved here in the late 80s, the street near his apartment was nearly always deserted. Now, he says, the cars never stop coming. The word is starting to get out. Carl Schrott's moving out. That's going to become all new business again, too. Um, Carnicerias are just going rampant. We've had the uh, Schneider Hardware Building. Hasn't been in business for more than 10 years. And now it's a really viable art gallery. And so we decided some of what could be done. And we said, well, we got these walls in through here. And so Ribbon Plumbing, Jay Ribbon, got a hold of the Picasso team. And we went ahead and they came up with a design for the mural to, uh, you know, help focus uh, the Latino community on improving their health. Uh, ever since that mural went up, the tagging by gangs on Vinton dropped like at least 90 percent, uh, pretty much basically overnight. And it was one of those things about you can be out there and you know, gang graffiti tag something, or you can be somebody who makes graffiti art that everybody loves and wants to help protect and build. Uh, I think it's just a phenomenal investment in our youth to do that. The mural in Larry's neighborhood was painted by students at Omaha South High School who are part of the Picasso Project. The school's mascot, the Packer, reflects South Omaha's heritage. This area of the city held the nation's largest meatpacking plant from 1955 to 1971. The name of the project comes from combining the mascot's name with Pablo Picasso's. The program offers students known to be tagging illegally a chance to channel their efforts toward legal art that will make the South Omaha community more vibrant and less hostile. 
It was started by curriculum specialist Firuz Bishara two years ago as a way to curb vandalism. The first time that we put them together, we actually just called them and brought them down to a room, and all these people were there, you know, this all these police officer, the gang unit, the principal, a lot of administrators, you know. Most of the students called to the meeting were known graffiti taggers, and a gang unit officer gave them an ultimatum. Join the Picasso Project and use your art for the good of the community, or risk ending up in jail. Of course, can you imagine a bunch of teenagers there saying, well, I don't have an option here. And as he put it is, you, ha- you have skills, you're a great artist. What are you going to go with your art? Do you rather be on the street just so a few guys know who you did it and you can have some reputation on the streets? Or are you going to take your art to galleries and really, you know, make money out of it and become somebody from there we went and we got a few walls to paint. We started with Van Gogh. Uh, Bill Seisler gave us a wall and he's like, what are you going to paint? It's like, I don't know. And so you have no idea. It's like, no, I'm just going to let the kids paint and self-express and, and see what they uh, want to come up with. For these kids, spraying isn't merely a way to practice art. It's an outlet for expressing their identity in a tangible way. For most young kids, the appeal of illegal graffiti lies in the thrill of the tag the innate urge to get their names up on walls and become known or feared throughout the neighborhood. The Picasso Project channels this urge into something productive. One of my conversations this morning with one of the kids was, am I going to be involved with this after I graduate? Is there any ways you can find a job for me to come and do what you do in other schools or to take the Picasso Project to other schools? How can we manage uh, to do that? Many of them will go to college and might do art, they might not. This may have been just a way to get to college and to get out of high school and I will be extremely satisfied that if that happens, they don't have to do uh, graffiti art or spray the rest of their lives. This is just a way to keep them engaged. These students want to be able to make a living off of their art. But making money from painting is difficult for any artist, let alone one who uses a method like graffiti that has not been accepted as true art by much of the public. But none of that matters to these students when they paint. One can see an almost symbiotic, even spiritual relationship between their hands, the paint, and the wall. For many of these kids, graffiti art is their only true passion. This passion runs especially deep in senior Mike Kennett. Come on in. Check it out. This is the new digs for now. And as you can see, we're, they're actually trying to sell it. Got some little tagger kids tagging on my sign because they know I live here. A two year veteran of the project, Mike currently lives with his friend Andrew and Andrew's mother in a neighborhood just south of 24th and Leavenworth Streets. He, his mother, and his sister were forced to move out of their nearby house when it was severely damaged in a fire. The house is now condemned. This is me and my, my other buddy, Josh Koshka, and that's me when I used to tag bones. Completely different styles than nowadays. Mike has been using the same tag for years, bones. It is a name that can be found on the street from Mike's days of illegal tagging, and it is part of his identity. His own singular artistic artifact that marks a place, a time, a state of being. Mike was here. Mike painted this. There's never too much confrontation going on. It's too bad the parents weren't home. Or actually, it's kind of a good thing they weren't. They were some space. But yeah, it's chill. This is a nice house. Too bad they're moving, though. building uh coming around march or something like that i'm having an exhibit here of my own and i'm going to have about 80 89 canvases that are done and ready to be displayed but i'm still working on i'm trying to get around 200 of them i'm just going to put a put a random price tags on there 10 15 bucks maybe for the bigger ones 100 and 200 bucks
place to be an artist? Right? No, it sucks. <laughs> it's, uh, it totally sucks. Like, you know, and I, I think that's, that's kind of the, the thing that I get frustrated with as a professional artist. Like, it's really hard to sell work. Jeff King is a local struggling artist whose own urban-influenced work has a tough time finding any sort of audience. These, these cats at uh, the Kent Bellows Studios, they uh, decided to do like a big art mural project uh, along this trail and it's like, you know, the grand opening or celebration ceremony of this whole thing, so it's, there's like tons of people walking around here. Jeff has experienced firsthand the lack of market interest in urban art. He says that while the types of murals done by the Picasso Project do a lot of social good, they don't always prepare the students for the reality of how hard it is to be a working artist. It's almost like an abatement tool now, you know, to like have, have kids out doing murals on the side of a building, you know. Which is cool, I mean, I'm not dissing it per se. It's, it's also to say that though, you know, uh, kind of detract, in my opinion, detracts from the art, you know, like, you got this kid, like Francis Hugo, like super talented kid, you know, and he is in this program doing his thing and whatever. It's like, like the the program gets the acclaim, the the mural gets the acclaim, not not the individual artist, you know. It's it's not to say that, you know, uh, it's a bad thing to have these programs. Hell, I mean, if I was a kid in this area looking for an outlet for artistic stuff, it would be a great thing to have. Hell, I mean, and truly, like I've said before, you know, had they had this sort of thing when I was a kid, I would have been geeked. Urban art still has a tenuous presence in the Omaha art scene. It all comes down to a question of meaning. There remains a conflict at the heart of the urban art movement, one which pits artistic integrity and authenticity against consumerism. If the street art movement spawned with the thrill of illegal graffiti, Tigers argue, is that meaning diluted once street art is commodified? This conflict makes artists reluctant to sell their work, which in turn creates an environment where the artistic merits of street art are overlooked, and it simply continues to be associated with crime and poverty. Trying to make it as an artist, I think is next to impossible here. You know, and I've been told this by several people as well. It's like, you gotta get outside this realm. I mean, we're, we're in the middle of like one of the more conservative states in the union. I mean, I, I, I think it's not a far cry to imagine that maybe stuff like this wouldn't be so interesting to most people. Creative people tend to like to stick together and kind of play off of each other. I think it's having a kind of rolling effect with the visual arts, with writers. So the whole cultural scene, I think, has taken off. But specifically, if you are an artist that does um, large-scale public art, I think your row to hoe is still as difficult as it's ever been, just because there aren't a lot of commissions out there and your investment in time and energy to do a major piece of public art is still limited. It is this public indifference to artistic graffiti combined with the lure of the illegal that keeps the Picasso project from being completely successful. Some students, no matter how hard they try, cannot break away from the environment in which they grew up. I have one kid that dropped the program two months into being with us. The, it was my first group of kids. And he did graduate, but he didn't graduate with me. It just, it wasn't for him. He wasn't willing to give up the illegal graffiti. And I couldn't have it. I know eventually he's going to end up in jail. This is Mike's old house. Remnants of his childhood scatter the yard. Half-finished tags on the trees, spray marks on the porch. This is the first time he has come back since the fire in which nearly all of his original works were destroyed. He recalls how he skated in the street, how he helped build the fence in the yard, how he made this his home. As you can see, there's unfinished tags, there's finished ones, the crappy ones right here, like when I first started. This is where the fire started. Like over here, I'll show you where the little back porch was. This whole thing was tagged. As you can see, it looks like a little bit fresher paint. But right here is where it started. This was the entry right here, and there was a door right here, and the walls came out all the way to the back side. But these walls right here were hollow at the first time. 
but we boarded up these walls and that and uh, we did all these we, that's where we put all of our paper tags and stuff and I planned to take those down when I left because I wanted to keep them and then uh it's gone now like I all that proof pretty much all that evidence was gone we we're going to a gas station I get a phone call and I didn't believe it at first I didn't believe it I was like no this is a lie this this can't be happening no way and then parked all the way up there and I'm, I'm running, like mobbing down the street, like knocking people out of my way because half the neighborhood's out in the middle of the street going nuts. And I'm like, oh man, I just broke down, dude. I just fell to my knees, I blew up my lighter and I crushed my pack of cigarettes in my hands and I was just like, dude, this can't be happening, dude. Like, what are we gonna do, mom? And she said, I don't know. That was, that was the very first time in my life when I asked my mom what we're gonna do and she said, I don't know. Then that, that honestly, it gave me the fact of the matter that there is no more hope. It was bad, dude. It was super bad. And they even tried blaming me. And they were like, was this your fault? And I, I about socked that cop in his mouth. I almost did. Until I, I caught back, stepped back to reality a little bit. I was like, all right, sir, this wasn't me. <laughs> this is my house. I've lived here for 17 years. And I'm sitting here bawling in this guy's face, like literally, I couldn't stop crying. I mean, I didn't know what to think at the time. I didn't know what to think. I was lost for like the next month or two. I didn't, I just did whatever the hell I wanted, you know? I don't really talk about it with anybody much. This is the first time. What made you want to talk about it? I have a problem with holding things in, like, and I guess I had counselings, like counselors and stuff tell me, it's, it's bad for you to hold stuff like that in. I mean, I think there could be a big change within graffiti if people take it to another level. That's all I knew about graffiti. That's all I thought there was to graffiti, was going out and getting my name out there and getting known. And I did, I'm not gonna lie, everybody knows who I am. And now I think, I think back and I'm like, dude, it doesn't even really matter anymore. If I see like a younger kid trying to do the wrong thing with his graffiti, I mean, I, I mean, because that's what he knows, I'd probably sit him down and I'd, I'd let him know, even though you're young and you might not have a chance right now, but there is something better than that. Like there's something more than what you're doing with your graffiti, wasting your paint like this, stealing cans when you could be working your way up to the Picasso project or something even better, like going to college for it, doing something better. I wouldn't do it exactly how it happened to me, but I, I would give him subliminal messages within his mind that would lead him the right way. I mean. I mean, that's how it works with me. I mean, it'd be complicated, but I guess it would work. I might have to try that sometime. The Picasso Projects has done a lot for Mike and for his fellow students. It has helped them focus on the art itself rather than the gangs and the needless violence that surrounds it. They now teach younger kids to paint legally, not tag illegally. Many of them have decided to pursue careers in art because of the program. Some of them know that they face a tough road if they want to try to sustain themselves with their art, and others haven't thought that far ahead. Many people have tried to define graffiti, to put a label on it for the masses. Street art, urban art, spray art. For Mike, however, the personal connection he feels toward each of his works is indefinable. There is a beauty in the simple act of expression that cannot be defined in terms of aesthetics, money, or fame. There is only what he knows and feels. There is only the paint, the wall, and him. That is all there ever needs to be. I did like the Kennet, because that's my last name. Old Kennet tag. I'm actually about to take this. Man, it was chilling right here. That's where it was. All dangly like that. I don't think they should get rid of it. As a matter of fact, I think I might just take this with me. I'm going to. Because other than that, I don't really got much from this house besides this documentary and this piece of wood now. <laughs>